Welcome to Seattle Maritime Matters. I'm Tosca Pinder, president of the Seattle Propeller Club. And today we're here with Stephanie jones Stebbins, who's the managing director of the Maritime Division at the Port of Seattle. Thank you for joining us today, Stephanie. That's good, thanks for having me. So I wanna talk a little bit about the exciting port news announcement that just came out recently to create a green corridor between Seattle and Alaska. Do you mind starting out talking about what the Green Corridor is and what the project's goals are? Thanks so much. This, uh, this is a project that I'm really excited about and the port is really excited about. A Green Corridor is a shipping or in this case cruise focused corridor that um, seeks to get to ultimately to uh, zero carbon emissions corridor. And uh, initially we're looking at how you would do that. Is it feasible? Uh, what's the technology? What's the financing? What are the policies and the regulations that need to be in place? So we're partnering uh, with folks uh, between here, uh, ports in Alaska, ports in British Columbia, as well as um, all of our major cruise line customers to really look at how we could do this together. And so what this does is accelerates our path to zero carbon in ways that then the rest of the world can learn from and this can be exported. It really allows us to be a test bed for uh, looking at the feasibility of a zero carbon future. Great, Stephanie, that's fantastic. Um, do you mind sharing a little bit more about the community that's involved with this first of its kind green corridor. So we have all of our major cruise customers have signed on to Carnival Corporation, which includes Princess, Holland America, uh, Seaborn. Uh, you also have, um, um, and of course Carnival, you have uh, Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings and Royal Caribbean. These are our three major groups. And additionally, uh, Cruise Lines International Association has signed on. And this is really important because they represent cruise, uh, cruise lines around the world. So then this really gets really the industry support and buy on, buy in. And they have just announced globally a uh, commitment to get to, uh, to uh, net zero future by 2050, which has excelled, accelerated beyond what the International Maritime Organization is requiring it. So this is right in line with that. And then finally, so we have ports, we have cruise lines, and then finally, we also have um, uh, non-governmental organizations that are real experts in decarbonization. So we have um, Global Maritime Forum, we have Maritime Blue, we have Blue, Blue Sky Maritime. So we have this really powerful coalition of ports, of cruise lines, and of decarbonization experts. And with that, I, I feel like we have got a real chance to um, really drive what's happening in the maritime industry globally, not just locally. Wow, that's great. You know, it's really important to see communities involved um, and really everyone coming together to get this off the ground effectively and smoothly. Um, what can we expect to see as far as the initial steps as this project gets underway? First, we're working together to explore the feasibility of this. What are the kinds of investments technologies, policies that need to be in place. That, that is what we're working together to do. We need to do fundamental things like, how are we gonna govern ourselves? How do we define more clearly, you know, our, define our goals? How do we make sure we're enhancing and supporting the emission reductions that we're already doing? All of our organizations, um, are, are already engaged in decarbonization efforts and we wanna make sure that we accelerate those. Great, that's wonderful to hear, Stephanie. You know, we really recognize the Port of Seattle as being a leader in other types of emission reduction efforts as well. Do you mind sharing a little bit about those efforts with us? Well, we uh, have announced our own goals, of course, to get to, to, to reduce our carbon emissions by 50% by 2030, which is coming right up. Uh, and to uh, reduce our, our own carbon emissions, so just that, that which is emitted by the Port of Seattle, uh, by 20, to, to zero by 2040, and then for our overall activity in the port to be at zero by 2050. So those are very aggressive goals that we have been working on, things like 
Um, of course, investments in shore power, investments in, we are working on a pilot program to look at hydrogen. We are studying how we electrify the whole waterfront. So um, we are not only have done things already that we've been leaders in like implement shore power, but also investigating how in the future we really build on that. You know, I just have one last question today for you, Stephanie. Uh, the port recently released its comprehensive plan to address climate change and air pollution from maritime sources. What is the Maritime Climate and Air Action Plan designed to accomplish? The Maritime Climate and Air Action Plan lays out the road map, recognizing that out in the future, uh, we don't have all the details and some of the technology doesn't exist. So we're looking at, you know, how we uh, work with others to get there, how we provide incentives, um, how we use all of our business agreements, et cetera, to get to those goals. Wow, Stephanie, all great information share and to be proud of. The Port really has been a leader in this space and we appreciate your efforts. With that, I want to thank you for joining us today, Stephanie. Thank you so much. It's really great to be here.